Well, John mentioned a, a little bit ago that here at Zion, we've been doing this summer sermon series titled The Big Question. And we invited people from our church to submit questions. Uh, we started a couple of weeks ago, and, and John looked at the question that someone from within us submitted, where do I place my faith? Last week, he talked about, do non-Christians go to heaven? Next week, I'm actually going to talk about, why is God so mean in the Old Testament? And that actually comes about those of us who are reading the, the Bible in a year. In some of those books that we looked at, I mean, there was some pretty violent things that were going on. One of the questions we'll be looking at in a few weeks um, was, God, is, was Jesus a socialist? There's one in there on evolution. There's one on celibacy. And, and it just goes on and on and on. So today, I wanted to look at <clears throat> two questions. And the first question is, is really a pretty simple question. It's, it's historical and it's in black and white. And it's the question, why do people choose December 25th to celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, up until 336 A.D., there was no celebration of Jesus' birth. There was lots of celebration of the resurrection and of the Pentecost and of the ascension, but there wasn't any of the birth of Jesus up until 336 A.D. Well, they found out, actually, as, as all of us look at Scripture, I think we, we've all pretty much agreed that Jesus wasn't born in the winter or wasn't born during the December 25th period of time like in, in Tanzania, uh, December 25th is not the winter, but Jesus was born probably during the springtime of the year. Well, December 25th, before 330, 336, was the birthday celebration of the sun god, Mirtha. And they had all of these public parties and banquets and people gave gifts and, and they would hold sacrifices in the temple. But probably the key to, to the celebration was they had these huge bonfires because they felt that fire represented the sun god Mirtha. And there was a fear of Rome being burnt to the ground because this just got out of control. So the Roman bishop, because of all of the evil and the destruction that was taking place, he declared December 25th as the birthday celebration of Jesus to keep the Christians from indulging in this old pagan festival, sort of to, to offset all that was taking place. And in all honesty, it wasn't but a few years later that the pagan holiday went away and we still celebrate the birth of Jesus. So that's the December 25th question. So here's our main question for today. And it's a pretty simple question. <clears throat> Why are we here? And obviously for our purpose here this morning, here in our worship space, we're here to combine as Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. But the question's deeper than that. It's, why do I get up in the morning? What's, what's my purpose in life? What was my life all about? Uh, I actually think it's sad when we as human beings try, what we try to do in our lives to find out that answer to the question, why do I exist? What's my purpose? Sometimes we, we go the wrong direction. I recall going to a college campus some years ago, and I walked into the, the lobby of the administration building, and there was this huge sign on the wall. It said, find your purpose in life and make an appointment with the career counselor. So we often, in order to try to get at this question, we often focus on our vocations. We as Americans 
put lots of emphasis on our vocations. Whether it's a nurse or an educator or a banker or a farmer or a pastor, we often look to our education to find our purpose. We often look to success in our lives to discover the answer to the question, why am I here? Some of you may have read the book, Purpose Driven Life. And this is actually Purpose Driven Church that Rick Warren published in 1995. It became this bestseller. But he, he has this quote, and it's very clear. He says, if you want to know your purpose in life, you have to start with God. You cannot tell you what your purpose is because you didn't make you. The only way to know your purpose is to start with God. Now think about God's creation for a moment. <clears throat> every star and every animal and every plant and every fish, God created them. And, and God, in, in the first, second chapter of, of uh, Genesis, says it's good. He created all these, and it's good. And he created everything with a purpose. Now, there's some weird things that God created in the earth and on the earth. When I was in Africa, this was one of the reptiles, I guess, that I saw. And actually, it scared me to death. And I know Pastor Bliss and Dr. Torres may have seen this. But it's called a chameleon. And it changes colors. So now they got the color of all the colors, but it might be just pure green. Or it might be red. But it, it has a purpose. And we actually probably know it as changing colors, or you know, the colors change in the midst of the environment to protect itself. But I have a hunch there's another purpose. Or maybe another place. This is called the Great Dune of Pila in France. And actually, it's an interesting place for miles upon miles. There's forest and woods and evergreen. And in this one little spot, almost as if God just kind of dropped this down, are these sand dunes. Well, God put them there for a purpose. Some say it's like a little Band-Aid that God put on. Yet there's people in France who say that's one of the most spiritual grounds in all of Europe. Or something else that God created. Do you know what the largest single living thing there is on the earth? You think of elephant or, or that God created, you think of elephants or you think of a tree or a whale and how big they are. It's actually a mushroom, a fungus that grows in the national forest in the state of Oregon. It's 2,000 acres of fungus. But it's got a purpose. And I think of all the other things that, that God has created, even flies and mosquitoes. I still wonder about that with God. But you know there's a purpose. Well, think about human beings now. God created man in the garden. There's actually two stories in, in the book of Genesis. But God said, God needed, wanted to make a companion for man. God said it's not good for man to be alone. So out of the earth, he formed all the animals of the field. 
And then what God did <clears throat> is God took all of the animals and placed them in front of Adam for him to choose a companion and to name the animal. And I can just imagine this scene. Actually, it's, it's hard to imagine the scene of, of God bringing a lion in front of Adam and him like, yeah, maybe, no. Or God bringing an, an elephant. Or maybe a zebra. Yeah, maybe that could, no, no. But and God, or Adam couldn't decide. But then he had a deep sleep fall upon the man, and he removed one of his ribs. And that, that's amazing to me. You would think if God would make a companion, he would maybe have used his head, his brain, or maybe his feet. But God chose ribs, which actually represent equality. <laughs> Not higher, not lower, but equal. So there's a purpose. God created us for a purpose. So now comes the answer to the question. Here comes our purpose. And the question is, are you ready for this? Be careful because it could change your life. Our purpose on earth is to be like Jesus. The scripture lesson that, that Wayne just read to you says, For by him, Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible, invisible, whether they're thrones, kings, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. That's the answer. Our purpose in life is to be like Jesus. Everything, absolutely everything started in Christ and we find out who we are and why we are here in Christ. I'm sure most of us have heard and maybe some of us have said, I got to find myself. Well, you won't find yourself without Jesus. One of the saddest days in my ministry, and, and it was over 20 years ago, but I still remember going to the a hospital or a hospice room of someone who was dying. And I remember walking in and starting a conversation. And then he said to me, Pastor, I never found out my purpose in life. His family and I did some quick Jesus things with him because we were made for Christ. We were made to be like Christ. Christ, we were made to follow Christ, and until we understand that, our lives will not be totally understood. We're not taking our successes to heaven with us. We're not taking our careers, we're not taking our businesses or our farms or our accomplishments, we're not taking our worldly success. None of that's going to heaven. What you are taking is what you've received in Christ in your life. I had a wedding here yesterday. It was a wonderful wedding. Some of you know Danielle Bischoff and, and Thomas Kaiser. <clears throat> but they chose the scripture lesson, Colossians, the third chapter. And it, it seems like for years, couples, most couples were using 1 Corinthians 13, but for, uh, Colossians 3 has become now kind of the, the wedding scripture verse. And when Paul wrote these words to the Colossians, the, the church was infected with false teachings. That, that became part of their DNA, and, and Paul wanted to divert that. So here's what he said. He said to the people, put to death 
the passions and the desires of the world and put on Christ. The translation they read yesterday was clothe yourselves with Christ. Be more like him. And then it says put on Christ with mercy and kindness and meekness and forgiveness and humility and most of all love. All the traits of Christ. God put us on this earth to develop these gifts and become like him. And to use those in our families and in our churches and in our jobs. And the world's advice is so much different. The world says, strive and you'll find your purpose through accomplishments and through successes. But Paul said, in order to fulfill your purpose, put on Christ. So here's the challenge. Actually, I actually think it's an adventure. So the adventure is in order to make us like Jesus, God is going to take us through everything that Jesus went through. He did it with Moses and, and Moses protested it. He said, I can't speak. He, he, he did it with Sarah, waited till she was older and she laughed. He did it with Jeremiah who used the excuse he was too young. He did it with Jonah. Jonah just ran. But God is going to take us through what Jesus experienced, joys and sorrows, which Jesus experienced. He's going to take us through thrills and disappointments, which Jesus experienced. He's going to take us through completeness and some loneliness, pleasure and pain, all so that you and I can become more like Jesus. Before we were born, God created and developed a plan to make each and every one of us like Jesus. I pray that you would live your life as God made you to be.